Hey, good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to our regular scheduled council meeting for June 6, 2022, 6.30 p.m. here at the New Palace Park Shelter House. Um, council, citizens, administrators. Ms. Burner, if you would call roll, please. Yes, Mayor Lowry. Here. Vice Mayor Grimm. I'm here. Councilman Bond. Here. Councilman Cook. Here. Councilwoman Eggleston. Here. Councilman Lindsay. Here. Councilman Roadwald. Here. Seven members present. All right, thank you very much. And tonight's invitation will be done by Councilman Lindsay. Bow your heads, if you will, please. Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight in Jesus Christ's name, Lord. We ask you to give us guidance on the business of the city. We ask you to protect each and every one in this house this evening, Father. Lord, we ask you to protect our police officers, our EMTs, our firefighters, our military, Lord. Father, we ask you also to bless this country. God knows we need it, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. That was weird. <laughs> Everybody did a double take. Yeah. Oh, it was switched. Yeah. So. Keep it from getting all right, moving on, we'll need action on the uh, minutes for May 16, 2022. Second. Eggleston, and Lindsay is the second? Correct. <clears throat> Any comments, questions, or anything, Council, on those minutes? All right, and you want to call the vote, please. Okay, Councilman Roadwold? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Vaughn? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Those minutes are accepted 7 0. All right, thank you very much. All right, moving on. Communications. Uh, drop down to City Manager's report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of public, members of council. I uh, share with you the City Manager report. Under informational items, under discussion topics, we have the Mayor's Court. We have our first session this Wednesday, June 8th. Court does start at 6 p.m. We are excited but yet nervous to see how it goes for the first one, but I'm sure it'll be fine. Um, so one thing I wanted to bring up is we are still working out some kinks on some criminal citations. Um, so we're still going to move forward with the traffic side of things, which is going to be hopefully the vast majority of those tickets coming through the court. But we have some issues with the criminal side of things we still got to work out. Namely, let's say, for example, someone goes to Dollar General and they steal property. Someone has to retain that property. So we're trying to work out, is that going to be held here at our substation? Is that going to go up to Clark County Sheriff in their property room? Even with some OVI convictions, we have some concerns. So we're still working out the kinks for the little part of that criminal side of things. But again, we are moving forward with our, with our crim, uh, traffic. City sign audits. So we uh, audited the signs last Wednesday. I am working on a detailed report for council. So the next step after that report is issued to council is to get a quote for repair. Most of the signs we saw, the new Carlisle ones are like 10 by four foot. They're in actually good structural conditions. The only one that's kind of structurally questionable is the one by Wadadog. Other than that, they all need a fresh coat of paint. I was concerned about the structural integrity of most of them, but it sounds like they're, they're just about good. We're also going to give you some examples of some other sign options should council want to just go in a different direction. But as soon as I get that report done, we'll definitely send it out to council. Uh, contractor quotes, we are securing quotes for Main Street maintenance. Uh, we have one quote secured. Uh, we're going to request a second quote, possibly a third. Um, right here it says impact on flower bed development and maintenance. So for the past couple of years, I've been stressing with uh, a couple of employees that we really need to focus on our main corridors. Um, so and, uh, we decided to move forward with a contract on that. I would love to have flower pots downstairs, uh, downtown on our street post. Um, we got a lot of flower beds around town that are hard to maintain. We've got a street crew that's responsible to cut a lot of grass in the city. To throw that flower bed maintenance on top of them is kind of a burden. Um, so how, how can we have good uh, results and still maintain the level of service? So we are looking at to have a contractor come in here. So hopefully once we secure the other two, we'll definitely bring it to council because the cost of that is probably going to be over 20000 The first quote we got was just for the prune, the Main Street trees, the silver, Asian silver, silver lilacs. We have like 50-something of them. That was 22500 for them to come in once a year and prune. So you're looking around two, two, 250 a tree. So that's something that we, knew, we do need to keep up, keep up on because if they grow, they get too big, especially for our core downtown. Uh, right now there's one in front of the title agency, you can barely see the sign. So something we are working towards. Um, work sessions, I mentioned that at the last minute to revisit today possibly. 
I'll let council to, to talk about that. Um, if you guys, once these developments start coming in more, maybe have monthly or every other week work sessions just so we can all be on the same page regarding the developments. Um, residential developments, um, right now we'll be setting up a meeting with Miami and Clark counties to determine taxing should the area not be removed from the township. Um, and then I'm gonna have Jake involved with that step and also TIF education. We're gonna be reaching out to some people to hopefully have come down here to council to give you guys a presentation on the TIFs and then securing bond council as well. Uh, fireworks show, I have placed the deputies for four deputies and detail commander. That is an addition to our regularly scheduled deputies. Um, and we also need to talk about the Porta Johns because I think I was trying to order them Friday. Um, the company had no recollection of that order, but talking to Councilman Roadwald, there's already four on site for at his ballpark that we're just we're just going to to use if that's okay with council. Uh, Mr. Mayor, how many people do we have? Uh, maybe somebody on the count, Mr. Cook, may know. How many people comes to the uh, fireworks show? Back to the I think we had between. A thousand and fifteen hundred at the last show. Okay. They're packed in the IGA lot. They're packed in the lot across the street. They're packed at the ball. At the ball so park. about fifteen hundred people. You think we have? At least. You think four Port Johns is going to handle four four hundred or fourteen hundred uh, people? Uh, May I? People. We'll That's half of what I bring in on opening day. You have not have that many people, right? I'm bringing three thousand people on opening day. Oh really? Okay. But they got a wood drill back too. No, they don't. It's all for the Johns. And another thing we too talked about too, and I think last year we had the discussion with council that people aren't there all day. They literally mm -hmm. show up five minutes before, you know, a couple minutes before the show and then they go on. So they're not there for a long period of time. If it's an all day event, that's something we should address, but literally as soon as, as quick as they show up, the quick they leave. Yep. And, and the IGA, like, like Mr. Cook said, the IGA is, or maybe Mr. Grimm did, is, is the main place that they sit and the Porta Johns are right Right basically there. off the IGA part. Mm -hmm. What, all of them right there off all the IGA? Right there. Okay. That's where the, F, or the EPA ma mandates we put them. Okay, so the just a question. I wasn't sure. What's up? Um, so one thing that may make a difference this year is that we have secured four food trucks, whereas last year there was only one that actually served food and then put on ice. Um, this year we have two, We have two, we'll have two this year that actually serve food. Um, and we are also in finalizing the plans for um, having a DJ. I don't know if that would entice people to be there for longer than showing up five minutes watching the show and just throwing mm -hmm. it out there. Sure. Okay. Well, my only issue, uh, not, not an issue, but uh, when we have the Port John's place at the ballpark, the EPA tells us where they have to go. Mm -hmm. uh, there is nothing so allowed on the backside. Oh, it, yeah. that's fine. I mean, the Port of Johns are right where they have to be mm -hmm. based off the of EPA and how far they have to be from the wells. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know if we can add another Port of John on that field. Yeah. I mean, I'm trying to think. I And this is what, third show we've done? Three? Third. Two. Third, third, I think. Third. Never had, never had any complaints about restaurant development. <coughs> So. And they get clean on Thursday, mm -hmm. so they'll be clean. I mean, there will be one day of use that Saturday before. So, yeah. I mean, I I agree that if you're pulling in twice that for opening day, it's not an issue. I don't think. Yeah. yeah. So. Mr. Cook, how much of baseball events are going to be there during? There'll that be day? seven games that day. Seven. We also have community garage sale that day too. It's gonna be a very busy day. Well, in the past, I know that we have sold Howard's and the carryout out of beer. They better stock up then. <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> consequently, I believe in the past, we've had two regulars and a handicap up there at Howard's. Now, last year, we did not have that. I'm going to be honest with you. No, there's, I, there's, right now, there's there's four Porta Johns up there. There's a handicap and three regular. That's, there are that's, four up there? Yeah, that's, that's our standard. I mean, we've had that for. Mm -hmm. Is there a possibility of moving two of those up into Howard's? Into the parking lot? 
I mean, you'd have to get authorization from them. We can't put. <coughs> I, I can talk to Howard. That's I mean, well. mm -hmm. um, I mean, they'd have to move them back after afterwards. <laughs> I mean, um, which won't be. I mean, that won't be free of charge. I mean, Board of Lena want, you know. A, well, a fee my only concern them. is you either move those or we probably should put those up there because we have an ordinance about urinating in public. And I don't think we want to go there. Sorry. Well, and I understand that. I mean, but I mean, if, if you actually look where they are and adjacent to the parking lot, I mean, it's it, it's 200 feet at, at most. I mean, it's I mean, um, are, are we going to allow parking down in the baseball area? Is it? No, you can't park down. There. I mean, that's, you, know, you can't take cars down there. I mean, EPA won't allow that. I mean, you know, I mean, that's the aquifer. You can't have cars on top. Who of won't allow? EPA won't allow. We can't. Our park is blocked off. You you can go down into the parking lot itself and on the back side, but you cannot drive inside the park. You know, um, so um, no. And you, I mean, we ha we'll have kids. I mean, the parking will be open just like it always is. They park in the side field. They park in the IGA parking lot. They park in our parking lot. Um, but I mean, we'll have anywhere, like I said, from seven games to, you know, depending on the weather, we might have a few more makeup games we need to put in there. Um, so I mean, we'll have at, at minimum seven, most likely 12 to 14 games that day. Um, it's going to be a typical Saturday for us. So um, our typical Saturday is 16 games. Is there any night games that night? Uh, yeah, we'll have one that starts at six. Cool. And then we're trying to get one for eight, but. Um, Mr. Mayor. Yes. Was you good, Mr. Cup? Yeah. Um, Thank you, Mr. Lindsay. The uh, I know we have four. You said down there at the ball ballpark. Mm -hmm. I think I agree with Mr. Cook that we should have <laughs> at least a handicap up by the parking lot if we can get one there. And if, if it has to be an extra one that we order and have set in the. Uh, because a lot of handicapped people are not going to be able to navigate through that field. And you don't want somebody falling on city property because they had to walk 200 foot to, uh, to get to the handicapped commode. So I would like to, if I can make that a motion, we will. Uh, what does the rest of the council think about that? We just put a handicap up there if you want to put one of each up there. If Howard's will permit it, then I think that's what we should probably do. Any feedback, Council? If we have money for that, then I think oh, yeah. having extra yeah. extra bathroom facilities for yeah. people is. I'd rather have more than 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 not enough. I'd rather have more uh, than to take a chance on having. Uh, this young lady here walking through there and fall because she hit a hole and she fell and tore up her other knee. <laughs> Leg, whatever it is, ankle. <laughs> so, I mean, if, does that, if that needs to be made in a motion, I will make that a motion. You're going to make a motion for a extra, uh, extra handicap. handicap and an extra. Yeah, put two oh, of them up there. Uh, well, make before, it a motion. before you do the motion. We, I would imagine we're going to need okay from Howard's before you guys make a we, motion. We'll, it'll be okay. I, I, I can I can make the motion where if we don't get permission, then I'm voiding. I mean, it, it, it's pretty simple to do that. Okay. So I move that we put a handicap on a regular porta john, uh, someplace close to Howard's parking lot, with the permission of Howard or IGA, whatever they call it now. Uh, if they do not give that permission, then that ordinance or that uh, ordinance motion would be voided. All right. Who, wait, did you second it? I didn't hear you second it. Did you second? Okay. <laughs> yeah, we'll pick it my hand. Any, <laughs> any other discussion before the vote? This will come out of the park budget. You can if it needs to. Come out of the fireworks budget. Two things I was going to add. We have already secured, we've already gotten permission from Howard. So there's like a little C loop that comes mm -hmm. off of their parking yeah. lot. Mm -hmm. That's where we plan on putting a food truck. We've already got their permission to do so. But do you want the restrooms right there with the food trucks? I wouldn't want that. They're already there. I mean, there, it's 
long enough. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah, and it's not like we're going to have food and porridge on. But we can okay. clarify, we can always clarify with IGA if okay. they're okay with I mean, porridge on being there. They're already there. Okay. That's where ours are. Right on that crew. Okay. So. <laughs> Call the vote, please. Oh. I mean, call the vote, please. <laughs> okay. Sorry, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Roadwald? Sure, yeah. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. That passed the 7 0. Thank you very much. And back to Mr. Bridge, sir. Hold on. So one regular, one handicap, right? Yeah. Yes. All right. Into addition of what is already there. Sure. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, new Carlisle health stats, they are attached. Please take a look at those. Uh, Parks and Rec Board, I did issue an iPad to the board president. She has that in our possession tonight. She can have mine. We're also going to issue each Park and Rec Board member an email address like the planning board and BZA have. <coughs> that way we can assure their communication is through a city medium, and then we can recall those for public records requests for anything we need to. And again, upcoming legislation for council review, this has not changed. Um, employee generally code, section code update, social media policy, indigent barrel policy. Sorry, Jake, you're going to have to review, review all this. Go, golf carts as vehicles and community garden code update. Um, that is all I have for the state mandated report. Be happy to entertain any questions. All right, council, any questions for Mr. Burridge? Yes. Mr. Weissman. The uh, mayor's court, you yeah. said it's just going to be uh, traffic mm -hmm. citation to be hearing. What about code? Violations. We are. We will be doing that too. I, I, did, I didn't. I liked, I did leave that, but that is still on the board too. We're going to have a meeting with the magistrate, and we're going to develop a form specifically for code problems. So um, once we get that set up with the magistrate, that will be going as well as, as well as tax code. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Council, any other questions? I had one kind of. It's probably kind of for Mr. Kitko, but it, maybe you can draw my memory. Mr. Uh, Major or Deputy Major Zach like, asked me right before the meeting. Um, so we went to recycling every week did we get rid of the recycling at the pool for the public no yes no 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 we're okay. going to no. see because if it's every week recycling if it takes care of the problem and then we're going to readdress it after right. we That's what see I if the every week recycling doesn't take it okay so there's your answer okay because i guess i guess it's being i guess it's locked Mm. So it is locked. I, I, I'm assuming that, that it's locked. Keeps people from throwing trash. In. Right, it's locked. Got I don't it. know if there's a slot. Oh, it's revisited. It's either we decided to wait. No, maybe we I can't wait. remember. I no. Let me. We did knock it off to the public. I think they started locking it. What they're waiting on to see if they need to move it. Maybe we'll revisit that with Howie. Yeah, um, I, I knew he. Me and April were just talking about this actually not too long ago. But I guess he had gotten a call from a, a citizen. A citizen that it was locked. Yeah. Okay. So I, I just didn't know the answer. Sure. It used to have, or the one that, that I use up there has a slot in it for the card. Right. They, and there may, I don't know if there's a slot in it or not, but I know that they lock it too because people put normal trash in it. That's what I want to, I don't want to speak anymore because I want to get muddled to confusion because if, if they locked it, I think they maybe left a slot open because that pr prohibits people from doing anything on the ground that's big with the hopes that they slide it through. I'll revisit the notes and all that minutes. Sure. All right. <coughs> Mr. Bridge. All right. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Thank you. All right. And moving Mr. on. Mr. Mayor, a question. Yes. From Mr. Bridge and the on the mayor's court. You had mentioned something about evidence. Is there a way at the substation to secure evidence to keep the uh, proper uh, custody chain intact? I don't want to answer that yet because I don't know how it's going to be handled. If it's handled at this level, then yeah, we'll have to put something in. Currently, no, there's not. If it's not handled at this level, then we'll have to revisit that situation. Okay. But I have a feeling if they want to store the evidence at the county, my recommendation, I don't want to speak too fast, is maybe we just look at if we do criminal or not. Because it seems like that's going to have a lot of the legality behind it, um, and it's a lot more complicated than a traffic, traffic ticket. And I don't want to speak too much because I don't know much about their profession. I learned a lot at the last meeting. Um, but it seems like I'm going to let Mr. Lehman kind of come up with something and work with the clerk of Chrissy Tomei, and then I'm going to come back to council once I have a, 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 a which way to move forward. So next question. Mm -hmm. If we use the county's evidence locker room, whatever they call it over there, are they going to, will they be charging us to store that evidence? I don't know. And if they do, I would suggest that we 
to a secure uh, area at the substation and our deputies can keep our evidence in our secure location and that will still keep the chain of custody intact, whether it's in our substation or it's at the county. What I'm going to do is let them guys decide what to do because there's a lot of rules and regulations that goes. With I understand all that. Up. I understand so all we that. Not, we, we may not be compatible for that. So that's why I'm taking wait until I get the information back from the higher ups so at the county sheriff's office to really make an informed decision that I can let you guys know of. And then once we have all that together, we can discuss it as a group with how we want to move forward. Because okay. to me, if it's going to be a lot of liability, my recommendation is cut the criminal and let the county do it. But I don't want to make that decision yet because I don't have all the information. But if the county charges us $5,000 a month for two packages that we need to store there, it would be cheaper, I think, to spend fifteen dollars or $20,000, which is only four months' worth, if just hypothetical numbers, mm -hmm. to, to have our own secured area inside the substation, whether it's on the second floor or downstairs, you know, wherever it could be that would be secured and that can be something as simple as a change, chain or chain link fence compartment or, or uh, I can't think of the name I'm thinking of. Sure. Area. Pardon me? Cage. Yeah, thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Yeah, chain link cage. And, uh, you know, they have to, if somebody wanted to get in there, they would have to, you know, break in. We have, it's alarmed, it's cameras, the deputies are in and out, you know, uh, Mm -hmm. when they're in town. Uh, other people is driving by. I drive by it probably every time I leave my house, I drive by the substation, no matter what time of day or night it is. The, uh, you know, it just comes down to, to money and what the county may or may not charge us sure. for that. Sure. And if we can build our own for four months worth of money, whatever the county charges, then I would think having our own would be uh, more efficiency. And more, con uh, more uh, careful minded of taxpayers' dollars. Sure. Okay, I'm done. I'll be quiet now. <laughs> hey, Mr. So the next question, <laughs> Mr. Vice. In a previous life, I would get reports from Enon Mayor's Court. Since we have the same clerk, will we be able to get those reports so we can see how things are going with it? Yeah, yeah. So you guys will get like a, um, I think a monthly report like we get now. So I'll include that in the city manager report. Okay. Mm -hmm. It'll be like a financial report. I don't know if it's geared like what cases they got. I'm sure it'll be a case summary. It's not going to be detailed. But I know it's a lot of the fines, <laughs> what it brought in, what it, you know, what it costs to operate that, how many, you know, fines we brought in, et cetera, et cetera. And if you guys want more on it, we can definitely <clears throat> talk with the clerk and, you know, have her adjust it. I would like to get the reports each after each one, after each session. Well, I don't know if she'll do that. It'd probably be a monthly report, like a manager report, like we do now. Mm -hmm. right. I don't know how she's going to deposit and all that stuff. So she, she's solely in charge of depositing, making the uh, payments to the city. So it's not like we have a control of that here. It's a complete separate entity in, in a lot of ways. So depending on when she receipts and all that, she may be able to do something financial. I don't, I don't know if it's weekly for her. Um, but as far as putting a, a report for us, I just anticipated putting it like the rest of the manager reports. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just one more on that same subject. Is the, uh, is that, setting in there change any for for opening day if you will no no we're going to original game plan we're taking that conference table turning it long ways um i'm curious to see how many cases we have coming in i think for the first couple months it's going to be trial and error you know because i can if it gets busy i can see it moving upstairs at some point in time right um but the clerk of courts is convinced most people just pay online okay you know so i don't know how foot traffic heavy we're going to be um, because if they have an option just to drop it in the drop box and don't have to show up, I think a lot of people are going to do that. Right. But we'll see, you know. But as of now, we're just, we're just, we're not, you know, I'll be honest with you, I'm not trying to put too much money into making this permanent because I don't know how long it's going to be there. Even when I got the signage, I wanted vinyl, not something permanent, just in case it has to move. That was my next question. You did get some sort of signage? Yeah, I did. Vinyl, so we can just take it off if we had to. Oh, because cool. like I said, in a year, we may have to move it to the new shelter house because we got a lot of tickets coming in. I mean, who, who knows? But right now, I'm just trying to keep it simple, have a place for it, see how it goes for the first couple months, and then kind of make big adjustments after that. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for city manager council? Yes. Sir. We have a council pizza thing coming up on June 18th. Mm-hmm. 
Is that going to be donuts in the morning and then pizza in the afternoon, like we had discussed? Or yeah, I'm getting the pizza and getting the donuts. I'm going to let Mrs. Eggleston go up there and get what she needs from IGA. Now we're not going to Sam's, and I'll show up in the morning and drop your guys' pizza off and uh, <coughs> your donuts. IGA, I mean, I mean, Bombados. I don't think opens till 11, so you won't have any pizza until after that. Mm -hmm. So I think the market starts at nine, ten. 10. 10. 10. So 10 to 2. We're going to be there 10 to 2 now. Is, was a question mm -hmm. for the time. So I'll probably get like three dozen donuts and then focus primarily on the pizza once it starts coming out at 11. I'll take care of council. Do we think that pizza is absolutely necessary? Listen, I, I, that's for you guys to decide. Uh, we've been down it before. You guys wanted to do donuts first. And it was, pe I mean, I think it was more towards pizza because of the time of day when you guys did it before i think it started at nine it was mm -hmm. a little earlier so it was yeah. more in the morning hours and now since it's going into the afternoon hours i think that's where the pizza came into play will we have a way of keeping them warm no they have bags if you were I mean, I guess you can get a bag from them they have heat bags okay anyone else miss eggleston um on the, you brought up the work sessions. I think it'd probably be a good idea if we did like a work session like we were doing them before. Mm -hmm. Prior to like the first meeting of the month. And then just have one work session. Well, another thing too is starting out there is in order, because I thought with the work sessions before, we'd like have to get through it and rush it. Sometimes it'd be yeah. empty, sometimes it'd be a lot, and then we have to rush it into regular session. Has council thought about maybe on the second Monday of each month having a work session dedicated to it? Can we do a daytime one, perhaps, if that's available? Not, or maybe a five o'clock one. You know, because we, as these development comes in, we're going to have a lot to discuss. What's I mean? What's what's the? Is there a need currently? I mean, is there something that we're needing to get caught up on? No, I'm just saying as 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 time goes down the road, like as these get closer, more information comes, and there's a lot more coming at us. In general, we should have, you know, I wasn't mad at the work sessions. I thought two a month were kind of excessive, but it is a good opportunity to get us all in on the same page and discuss stuff. And one of the things I wanted to talk to you guys about too is you can have two different agendas. I'm going to run this by Jake too. Right now, our, our agenda calls for public comment, and I'm always for the public speaking, you know, but if you go into a work session, you can amend your rules of council to have a different agenda for work sessions that don't allow public comment. It's just a work session. Right. And you can work through all your stuff. You know, a lot of cities do these. You know, but I would shy away from having one before the council meeting if you do allow for a lot more ample time because it just seemed like it wasn't a work session; it was one big lumped meeting, mm -hmm. and it really forced us in the back to get done in a time. And some of the stuff <clears throat> we can always cancel the work session. We could be here for 20 minutes, and be like, all right, we're done. But some of them stuff, you know, required a lot of attention and discussion. You know. Yes, Mayor. Mm, we'll get Mr. I, Grimm first. Okay. I would suggest we do what we've done in the past if we found a need for a work session and schedule one at that time. That's up to you guys for sure. That would be my two cents worth. That's, I would agree. Mr. Lindsay? I think the work sessions has a place, but not as often as it seems like we might need them. I think everybody can read the packets, read the information that were emailed, understand the information were emailed. Except for you, maybe? You raised no, your no, hand? No, oh. <laughs> The, uh, you know, I just, uh, if there's something, I agree with Mr. the Vice Mayor, <clears throat> if some, <clears throat> something comes up and we have to, you know, have a special meeting for it or a, special, a workstation for it, then, you know, if there's a lot of information, I would, I would go along with that. I wouldn't have a problem with that. But to have them scheduled at once a month or twice a month or whatever you was thinking, I just think is not needed. Well, most, most cities have them. <laughs> put it bluntly. One, most cities have them multiple times. They usually have them on their off Mondays. Yeah. And it's, it's more than just you talking to me. It's an opportunity to bring your charter review in. It's an opportunity to bring your parks and rec board in, your BZA board, your planning board, all your boards that report to you. Come together. We're working on the stuff. This is what we'd like to see. Those boards report to you. They don't report to us. 
you know, so when we look at these work session, I'm trying to make it all encompassing, not just administrative, because really you guys got a lot more to deal with other than just us as with the boards I just named. So it wouldn't be just like for this, but you can invite Mark <coughs> Rec to come in one day and go over, you know, what, what they're working on and, and work with them on that and to kind of direct them and guide them. But in the past, been my experience that if a board <coughs> has questions or needs guidance on something, that they come to a meeting, they go back there and they tell us what they want. Uh, usually that there's nothing they want that's so drastic that we can't take care of it at a council meeting. That's number nine on the agenda, committee reports, charter view or parks <laughs> report. Thank you, sir. <laughs> so I mean, I, I don't, again, the work sessions for what was just mentioned for for the different departments to come in and we ask them questions or whatnot. If there's something that they need to discuss with us, they will come to us. At least that's my opinion. Uh, but wouldn't it be more convenient and easy for them not to sit through all the legislation and yes, other things? Uh, my, just to get to the point to have their or they don't have to boom, 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 they come to you guys. <laughs> you know, there's also, a lot of stuff. <laughs> Um, especially with the way meetings have gone lately, um, it's not always convenient to sit through all the public comments to, in order to get what we need out. We can so always we can always move public comments till the till the end of the of the meeting, and 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 personally, my opinion, till we get through all these annexations uh, and some other things that may be coming up. I think we should amend the, the uh, rules of council and just permanently move that uh, to the uh, to the end, and then once things calm down, move it back. Because I always thought the, the comments from the public should be at the end, anyways. So when we get done talking about whatever we're talking about, they have information to actually ask questions and be and be relevant to what we're discussing. What does it take to amend right. rules at council? Just a motion? A motion and a second. And a We're going to see actually your charter. Your char I don't, is, it, is the outline of the meetings in the charter too? Yeah. No. No, it's it just the rules of the council. It does. The rules okay. of council. We'd like to have a link. <laughs> Click there and put it over here. You know, so I mean, it would take a motion, a second, and then a majority vote to, to make that happen. And that could happen right now if you wanted to make that motion. Yeah, I would move that we... Can I? Can we look into some things and do this next meeting? So I can just have a... I'll, I, I don't know. There's a lot of... I want you to look at and stuff like that before we just go ahead and make a motion. But we, as, as council, we can make motions on anything we want to and make it happen. What is there to look To an at? extent. And, and moving, moving comments to the end of the meeting should not involve an attorney at whatever rate we're paying him to do 16 hours of research to see what some some other country or some other city okay. is doing. It's not 16 hours of research. <laughs> we're just going to make sure that what, what we're going to propose to do is okay and legal. That's it. The, he make the motion where if it comes back and it's illegal, it voids it. Simple. I move that we swap eight and nine on the agenda have the committee reports before the comments of members public and if it comes back for it's illegal it's well, voided is a given is there a second i'll second it yes sir thank you okay hold on just a second i'm trying to get the notes here okay Grim was the first. Lindsay was the second. Yes. Yep. Councilman Roadwald. No. Mayor Lowry. This time, no. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Cook. No. Councilman Eggleston. No. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. That fails. Three, two, four. All right. Move on. City Manager's report. We were good, correct, Mr. Bridge? 
Yes, sir. All right, we will move on to comments from members of the public. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, all the above, please go to the podium. We'll need your name and address and try to keep it to five minutes, please. Hi, guys. Uh, John Kraybacher, 307 North Henry. Uh, I have a question. You know, um, the question is, well, when we, uh, the community garden took over Westlake, one of the things that we, the, the citizens wanted or the residents wanted, for us to block off and not make a uh, kind of a street through the parking lot. So we went and, and uh, put the gates up, you know, locked the gates. Well, we still get people coming, and they go all the way up to the gate, and they figure out they can't go, go through. My question is, and I don't know if this is for Randy or, well, how do, can we put a stop sign, you know, on that gate legally, and can we put a no through fare, you know, in the, in the entranceway? Stop sign, I'm going to say it's probably not warranted, and any kind of directional signage would be the responsibility of the school or you, because we don't own the land. Right. So, so, so I have to go through the school board to, yeah. or Mr. Dixon or whatever. Well, yeah, ask them, because they would have to submit all the formal requests, and then we'll have Howie take a look at it. But okay. as far as the stop sign, I don't know if that would be warranted or not. Well, because they come all the way through, and matter of fact, they, they go all the way up to that gate, mm -hmm. and they stop. Then they turn around and go back out. It's hard to see. And it's hard to see from a distance. So. You know, there's kids playing baseball and softball right there, mm -hmm. next to where the road mm -hmm. passes through there. But it's not city property. We don't lease it from you. You guys lease it from the school. Well, I'm just so wondering if we need a permit to have, do that. I would go through this, like, have a, the school, consult with the school, make sure you get okay with them, and then maybe just talk to Mr. Kiko and myself about the changes that need to be made. Okay. And it, it would be, probably be okay to put a no through fare. No through. It's an on-site direction no sign, so you'd have to get a permit approved. But that's why I want to know. Do yep. by the permit. Yep. Sure. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Kraybacher. Anyone else? Mr. Janelle. Janelle Zimmerman, two nineteen Prentice Drive, New Carlisle. Um, I have one question about the city website of being able to find information on it. I was looking to see if there was going to be a Memorial Day walk or something, because there always has been. And I, of course, I'm not very good on the computer anyway, but I was all over everywhere and could find no information on it at all. And on the city, it just says all day event. Well, what does event mean? Does it just mean the city office is closed? I don't know. I don't know what you're looking at. But we haven't had the Memorial Day walk in how many years? I think two. Well, just years. because it was because of COVID, though, that they didn't and have it. And then when you go to the city web page, I think the main page has the <coughs> events coming up, and it'll sit there and say, this day, this day, this day. It says what? And it says upcoming events right on the side, I thought. So yeah, and I clicked on it, and there was nothing. Because we're not having one. So that's no, why nothing about, about anything. And then, it, but it said it's an all-day event. For every holiday, it always says all-day event. Well, that just means the city office is closed. I'll have to talk to the guy who developed the website. I'm assuming that's probably what it means. Yeah. It says okay. city office is closed, and then it has all-day event. And like Juneteenth celebration, and then it says all-day event. Okay. And then same thing for so it is. It says everything it needs to say on that, or yeah. no? Yeah. I mean, if this is what they're looking at, yes. Yeah. I was just confused yeah. so that there wasn't right anything. Here. Sorry. Are you looking at this right here? Can you come up here and take a look at it? I think it, it was. Oh, she may be talking about if you go to the actual events. Like you have this right here, city council meeting, that, that and then where are where you, where you seeing? Where are you, you looking at? Yeah, there was something that said events somewhere. I don't know if it's like over. Like if you go on the menu, download meetings and events. Upcoming events? Oh, there it is. Yeah, and there's then, just looking at the like for Juneteenth and Fourth of July. That's just going to yeah. be the calendar. We'll take a look at it. It just, I think it's just. Where'd you find that at, Brandy? Uh, go Meet to all of the menu and then meetings and events. Yeah, so it goes to June 2020. Yeah, that's pretty informative. 
So you see City Council 6, 6.30, then we have the Juneteenth all-day event. So it's not but, technically so an event. So what does that mean? It's meaning that it's a holiday that all day. I guess it could be worded a different way. Yeah, you need but to just it's just well, no, all what, what they're saying, all day event is ju the holiday is an all day event. That's what they're saying. They're not right. saying there's an event <laughs> taking place. The holiday <laughs> is the event. Okay. Yeah, well, does that I make just sense? Found that one. <laughs> sure, I understand why. Yeah, it should probably just be reworded a different way. Offices closed. Offices closed. Offices closed would be sufficient. And I just thought it was strange since they'd always had it and it's we weren't having COVID. probably catch all that's built into the system. That's just, just probably already a pre-coded thing. But but yeah. There was just no mention of it. There was not anything that said we're not going to, because it seemed like for years and years and years they had, except for COVID. Yeah, I think, a, I don't know, a few months back we discussed, and it just it was always such low turnout that we just yeah. stopped doing it. Was, it I, I think it was the year prior to COVID we stopped doing it. Yeah, mm -hmm. just no one was showing up for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I knew there weren't. Who? Yeah. 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 We talked about just starting it from the city building and opposing the law. Yeah, but there wasn't even any service or anything, I guess, at the cemetery. At least I couldn't find anything, no. you know, for it. So I was just curious about that. And then, of course, on the annexation stuff, too. Um, they were saying that there is a plan that we have for development. I guess there is an actual plan, but where do we find that on anything? Yeah. What, is, what is the plan Who for- Who has a plan, the developer or us? Us, that the city has has some kind of a plan. We have a comprehensive land use plan. It was approved back in 2012. All cities have them. It tells you how to design and you kind of, use, it, it's a policy that we use to do our job. That's why you have all the development coming because the that the policy says for us to go after these type of developments. Well, I think, I think she's meaning a plan as in to move forward, correct? Right, yeah. A plan for the city to develop. That's the Just in okay. general, okay. not for this particularly, <laughs> just in general. That's the comprehensive land use plan. Right. Yeah, and somebody said something about it was supposed to preserve the rural feeling, but I didn't know where you go to read what that is. I you're, couldn't you're, find you're, that. Give me, your, give me an email and I'll send it to you. Okay. And... Um, I, I just thought they really hit it on the head at the planning committee. We should have a plan of what we want new housing to be already in place. What kind of houses do we want? What size? What things? What are we looking for to grow our city instead of just grabbing the first thing that comes along? Because it seems like that's what they did with the city building. They were desperate because they didn't have any room over there. So they buy that and now they can't even use it for that. We can't use, well, they were going to use it because the acoustics aren't too good here. We were going to use it for that. And we spent that money, but we didn't get what we wanted. We didn't get what we needed. And the fire department has no place to park their stuff because we can't afford now the asphalt to. It just seems like we're jumping into everything and not planning ahead and figuring out having any kind of plan about what we really want to do. And I just find that kind of scary. Um, do you know, I, got, I hate to tell you, I gotta stop you because you're past your five. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. No, oh, I didn't talk fast enough. I shouldn't have went over there and looked at that sign. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know how much you guys miss me. No, your mom, no, your mom. Thanks. Brandy Mullet, 522 Hamilton Avenue. This is more of a parks thing, so a um, couple of things. Number one, I don't know who we need to ask um, because I've gotten conflicting answers, but we desperately, Parks and Rec desperately needs somewhere that we can store stuff. Um, like for instance, for the Easter egg hunt, I put the candy at the city building, it was in the break room. Everything else that we had for the Easter egg hunt went in my shed at my house. Um, so we need like a central location that we can store things because hopefully moving forward, we'll have stuff that may be able to be used more than once. Um, and then I don't know if this is exactly what you were getting at, Mr. Bridge, or not with the, with the work sessions. Um, I think it would be beneficial to have a, a work session scheduled. Now, obviously, Parks and Rec is not going to need one once, once a month because we don't do, currently don't do anything that frequently. 
Um, but it would be nice to have something to where, you know, it, not so much of me coming up here and saying, hey, this is what Parks and Rec is doing, but more open dialogue, like but with you guys, hey, what about this? Or get, we want to get your guys' feedback too. Um, so, and last but not least, Janelle, um, we did not have time this year to pull off something for Memorial Day. We wanted to. Um, I'm not a fan of the Memorial Day walk for a variety of reasons. It's low turnout. It's a long walk for a lot of folks. Um, it is something that we're going to work towards next year. We just didn't have time to get it done this year. I, I just we always just thought that they, they were having a good Yeah. Since it, they always had that, I guess. And then my last, my last um, speaking back on the website, can we add something to the website? Is there something on there about the fireworks? I'm sure there's an event that's coming up. It says I'm sure there's a city event coming up. Mm -hmm. Not we can add it. Yes. Yeah, I, that's another thing. We're going to put together um, another flyer that we can distribute out to like local businesses, put in the city building. Um, we wanted to kind of advertise for the sake of our food trucks that are going to be there. We want to let people know who's going to be there and um, kind of get the word out a little bit more. So drive their business as much as we can. Sure. Yeah, that's easy. We can get it. If it's not up there, we can definitely put it up. I think I put it on Facebook already. Uh, but that's that's easy. As far as your storage stuff, I thought I told you and our planning director to tell you that you're more than welcome to use the second floor of 101 South Main Street. That well, I yes. At any point in time because you stored at the city building and we're packing there like sardines. So I don't know where else as far as secure that if it's eight o'clock at night on a Tuesday, you can text me and I can let you in. Cause that's the one-on-one building, cause it's all remote. Like street department, they're not remote like that. Wastewater, water, they're not, I can't let you do that. But one-on-one is that good spot. So it also has that chair lift. So if something heavy, you can put it on that chair lift. And believe me, we do it with our files. We'll have that chair lift take that, take that up. Plenty of room up there, plenty. Um, I wasn't sure if that was official. Oh. Um, and the last that I talked to Derek, he has suggested, um, the garage at the fire station, which Chief is like, <laughs> yeah, it's fire station. we don't have enough room for our own stuff, let alone yours too, like, so like you find somewhere else to put your stuff. There. You wouldn't want to go uh, there. Well, the hardest part is not what's storing it, the fact that there's 19 bags of candy back there and you had to, can't go back there and open the candy. Yeah, that was the hardest part out of all of it. I did not. Mm -mm. Well, I'm borderline diabetic now, so I didn't touch it. Is that, so I've never been into 101, um, and you had mentioned about the mayor's court potentially needing if to move something upstairs. Is that going to impede anything? If, if, if that happens, we have a closet back there. It, it, I mean, it's not like we're going to have floats and parade floats up there and stuff like that. So if that comes to it, we'll just find another place on the first floor to put it. We have a record room down there, but I'd like to keep those separate because that's locked. But if push comes to shove, we can give you access to that too. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that it wasn't going to be like Parks and Rec's got all their junk in here, and now we need to. Which we're not going to have that much anyway. But okay. Easy solution. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Anyone else? Judy Bible, 806 White Pine Street. I'm just going to refer to, I actually have a copy of the comprehensive plan with me tonight that Janelle was talking about. And I'm just going to read the first one, two, three things that it lists here. Uh, community character, enhance and promote the distinctive hometown character that makes New Carlisle such a unique and welcoming committee, a community. Natural resources, protect and preserve the natural resources and environment located within <coughs> and in close proximity to the boundaries of New Carlisle. Three, land use and development. Provide guidance and management for growth and development while maintaining and preserving environmental resources, community character, utilities, facilities, and safety services. Um, <coughs> For the whole Bethel annex, I keep coming back to two things. The potential damage to Silver Lake, which is a natural resource, 
which is up against New Kalala's boundaries, and the schools. It's something I've not heard anybody mention. I've heard people say it's the law that we have to expand our tax base. We have to do these annexations because we have to keep the city functioning, which is fine. But realistically, even though they keep saying New Carlisle is such an attractive place and you know these houses are going to sell and blah, 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 how many people are going to move into an area where the school district is in such distress to start with? How do we know those houses will actually sell once they're built? When people find out my kid's going to go to a school that's overwhelmed already, extremely crowded, with no relief in sight because of all the other annexations that are going on down in Huber. Secondly, you know, I keep hearing, well, New is not going to become Huber. No, it won't. We're not close enough to the interstate to get the kind of growth that Huber has. But New Carlisle, how do I want to say this? New Carlisle has a uniqueness about it that Huber doesn't. Huber, Huber Heights is built as a community of brick homes was their big selling point. You know, New Carlisle does not have a space for expanded traffic. I mean, you can't make Main Street a four-lane road if, you know, if we were to become Huber Heights, quote, unquote. So for that development there, unless they want to make the density extremely low, like I believe Bethel Township actually had it marked in their planning thing as two to three acre minimum lots, which would at least help preserve some of that character there and possibly not damaged Silver Lake and not bring as much pain to our neighbors to the west. I mean, they may not be in town, but they're our neighbors. They're a part of our community, so we need to think about them as well. Thank you, ma'am. Anyone else? Hi, Shelly Vickery, uh, 8780 East New Carlisle Road, <clears throat> directly across from the annexation property on, on Scarf and New Carlisle Road. Um, I did want to bring up an issue that I don't know that people have, have really talked about at all, and they've talked about environmental issues, but Everybody in our area is on wells, and we have some friends in construction, and I've heard that when a development goes into an area like that, a lot of times wells dry up. And I know you guys have said you'd be more than happy to supply water, but we don't want city water. We don't want the bill that goes with the city water. And I want to make sure that that's something that's being taken into consideration as well as how it's going to affect our wells and our, our um, current lifestyle as well with the annexation. Thank you. <clears throat> Anyone else? Natalie Donahue, sorry, 7835 Ag and Broad Road. Thank you. I just wanted to, um, this is the first meeting I've been able to attend since um, May 13th, and I just wanted to extend a, another thank you again to all those city council members and the staff who did attend the joint Bethel Township New Carlisle City Council meeting. Um, appreciate that because it was a Friday evening and everybody took their own personal time to do that. So I want to thank you for doing that. And um, uh, again, simply because I'm here, I'll keep it very short. I, again, uh, I don't have to repeat anything, but I am against annexation. So, and appreciate anything you can do um, as far as zoning and planning in that respect to keep um, uh, density down. So thank you. Thank you. 
Anyone else? Right. Um, there's debate I'm going into a little spiel here. Uh, yeah, I just want to touch on the whole annexation thing. You know, for me personally, um, we've been asked, you know, council members, me, so on and so on, have been asked, you know, well, keep, keep the annexation out. Well, I, as far as I know, no one up here has, has said that they were going to vote the annexation in, that we're, you know, no one has said that we are moving forward with this. I mean, we're doing our job as far as looking into it and looking at all that different aspects, of, you know, the streets and uh, you know, traffic and everything that you guys have mentioned numerous times. Um, and I, you know, and I had a lot of people that did ask me what I thought about it, and I, and I told them that I really wouldn't give my personal opinion on it until that planning meeting to where it was officially presented to the city. I mean, there was a lot of lead up to it, a lot of angry people, but that was the official time that it was presented to the city. Um, you know, and, and I have no problem saying now as a council member, me personally, not personally because I don't want it, but I don't feel that that particular arrangement that they're presenting is what's best for the city. I'm not saying I'm against an, uh, annexations or, or um, developments, because I do think that we need it. But something that really, and I don't even really need to mention this. It doesn't. It doesn't need to be mentioned. But I'm going to say it anyway. Something out of all this, you know, we have, and a lot of you guys that had come tonight that have spoken very, you know, calmly and professionally. The thing that, that upsets me is how much negativity and anger has come out of this. That really disappoints me. And I'm not saying you guys. I'm just saying as a whole. You know, there's people that are posting, you know, city city officials' addresses on Facebook and things of that nature, and it is just disgusting. I'm not saying that everybody's always perfect or, you know, that we don't make mistakes or say things that we shouldn't say. Um, but it, it just, it, you know, I mean, I've lost close friends over this whole thing, which is really sad. Um, but, uh, you know, I think that, you know, for the most part, I, th I hope that people realize that we're just, we're doing what our job is as far as, I'm not saying that we're doing our job is to annex, annex that into town because that's what we want. We want the tax dollars. Yes, we do want tax dollars. That's important. Some of the people that say that, and I said it at a couple of meetings back, they say it's not about, you know, you got to look at the whole picture. It's not about the money. Well, it, it's not about the money always, but unfortunately at the same time it is. You know, if, if you guys, if, if you guys, I'm not saying you guys first, I'm just saying this, if, if, if people say, well, it's not about the money, you need to look at the whole picture here. Okay, I can respect that to a degree, but it is about the money. But then can, can we say, when we ask down the road for a tax increase, you know, I'm not saying that's coming tomorrow or next year or three years, whatever it may be. Let's just say five years down. We say, well, the city of New Carolina needs a tax increase. Uh, we want a quarter percent or whatever it may be. Can we use that same analogy and say, well, it's not always about the money. You need to do what's right. You need to give us that opportunity to, to put those funds to good use to, to up our streets, our water infrastructure. So. Uh, you know, but I do, I do appreciate everyone that came tonight and they, you know, that, that, that speaks in a, in a professional level because that's, that's what it means. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the people that are just getting so irate over this on, on social media, it's, it's, it's disappointing actually. So, I mean, we, we all want the questions, we all want the, the conversation, but, you know, I think if we could all handle it like, like you guys have done tonight and so on, um, we'd be in a better place. So, but, but again, since it was presented to me, my personal stance on it for my, what I see as new call I don't like that. I do not like that development. Not necessarily for the same reasons you do, but I just think it's in it for me and for what I see new call in the future, it's a weird place for me. It's, uh, it's way too packed. I'm not saying that they wouldn't sell. I think, you know, your question as far as, you know, would, would people buy them? Uh, well, I think they would. I mean, and that's not a scientific study, but I mean, if you look at Carrot Hills, they're filled, they're filled and they're still growing. And that's where they're going to go. So I don't think the school's bad enough. I'm not saying it's not a bad situation, but I don't think it's quite enough yet for people to say I'm not going to move into this house because of Bethel Township or, Be or Bethel School. I'm sorry. So, but uh, but that's that's where I stand as far as what I see. What's the right move for New Kalau? I'm not crazy about it. I don't know what they're going to come back with. I I don't see them changing it to anything close to what you guys would like to see a house per acre. I just it's never going to happen. That's you know that they're never going to make any money off of it like that. What was it, 50, uh, 12 feet or something between the two? It's, it's just too close for me. Um, so, but we'll see what they come back with. So, I just I wanted to put that out there because we've, we've been asked, you know, what our stance was, and I didn't want to answer that until they officially presented it to us. And that's where I stand as far as what I see for New Claw in that particular area. So, thank you. Uh, I just ask a question. Real quick. If, if you do annex it, 
And for some reason that falls through and they don't decide to do it, then that belongs to the city. Is that correct? If we would be responsible for that land. Say, well, if, if we did annex it? If you do annex, yeah. Just do the annexation. Part. Yeah, we would. Be. No matter what happens, if they don't do it or somebody else does it, the city would be responsible to. Yeah. Well, we wouldn't annex it if nothing was going to happen to it. Well, if that's what I'm understanding your question. You mean like we annexed it just the way it is right now? Yeah. We would never do that. I don't see why we would, really. There'd well, be I thought no... we had to put it on the annexation before they put it on the other. Well, and, and the thing is, I mean, just because we, we don't own, we're not buying the land. The land is still privately owned. So even if we annex it and we don't approve the, the build site, it's still privately owned. They still have to maintain it. It's not yeah. city property. Okay, so it's just like your 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 house. We don't we don't maintain your yard. You own your house and yard. We you know the city has it maintained it's inside city okay, limits. It's the same concept. The city is not purchasing any. The city is not purchasing any land. These are all private developments, private transaction between two two people, or a business and a private person. The city has nothing to do with this except for establishing zoning, which has already been established by our. Our con yeah, our what, what's it called now, Randy? Well, the preliminary plan to zoning change will be coming at some point. Yeah. I mean, it's not officially hit you guys yet, but it will be coming. Yeah. Yes. So I mean, uh, which when you when you establish the zoning, that establishes the lot size and mm -hmm. and that that what what needs to be between the two houses, what what needs to be the frontage from the road, all that when you establish the zone, that establishes that. Just like every part of New Carlisle is in a different residential zone. Um, Drake. That area, um, their residential zone is smaller lots versus, say, Smith or, or even Willowick, which are larger lots. So, but no, the city's not purchasing any land. This is not going to be city owned. This is minimal, minimal cost, minimal, I'd say, risk on our part. I think you started like Twin Creeks. Well, Twin Creeks was, I mean, that that was a completely, I mean, that's. I mean that, that. I mean comparing Twin Creeks to what these two, possibly three developments will be is, is apples don't oranges. Yeah, but things um, can go wrong. I want to know what happens if things. Well, can go wrong. they're going to be built in phases, so they're not going to go and lay all the roads for the entire development right at first. They're going to do phase one. They'll get the infrastructure done. Yeah. I Once they complete that, that then. The, anything went wrong anywhere mm -hmm. because we annexed it. Does that put us? So basically, if we annex it as it is current form as farmland, and then they, whatever, they go bankrupt for conversation's sake. We, I mean, I mean, no, there'd be nothing for us to. Well, I guess depending on where the line went, we may have to plow some snow on the street. But other than that, the land wouldn't really affect us. Yeah, or the land would go into foreclosure and it'd be yeah. bank owned, mm -hmm. and then yeah. it'd be put up for auction, just like if uh, if your house went into foreclosure. Mm -hmm. And then 20 years down the road, we'll be visiting this thing again. Yes, right. Someone will come back and want to build on it eventually again. <laughs> All right. Thank you. I just wanted to... By the way. <laughs> What's that? Sorry, not to interrupt, but you can unannex it. Yeah, yeah, they discussed that before. I guess it doesn't happen very often. Mm -hmm. So. All right, moving on. Two more comments, committee reports. Uh, did you have anyone? One more question, real quick. Shelly Vickery, New Carlisle Road. Um, do you know when you're going to get another plan back from the builders at all? No, nah, we're just it. I think they go back on the 16th. Is that what it is? Mm -hmm. okay. There's one tomorrow, but I think that's for the north of school development. Um, 22nd, because it's, no, I think he did a special one on the 16th. 16th, there's one on the 16th. But, yeah, there, I think that's I think the one so. you guys are going to talk about for that one. I got to look at his notes he wasn't in today. And we think the planners will be coming back with another plan for the development. Yeah, they yeah. will for the next meeting. They'll definitely have Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. What day is that meeting? Because online, I see two different dates. He usually has them the day after the council meeting, which would be the 22nd, because our next meeting is on the 21st. But I want to say that this one is the 16th. He moved it up. Okay. Yeah. But I'll have to look, I'll, Thursday, somewhere yeah, I'll have to look yeah. at his notes. I don't want to speculate. Okay. Mm -hmm. 16th of Thursday. All right. So does Parks and Rec have anything to go over? No. Sure, they did. Got what I needed. All right, thank you. All right, Mr. Hall. I thought you would. Hi, everyone. Uh, Don Hall from the Charter Review Commission. I uh, just wanted to uh, show presence tonight to uh, ensure that everyone received the finalized Charter Review uh, report. Uh, and also, via my 
email. <clears throat> we would like to suspend our weekly meetings. Uh, we've been meeting weekly since since August. Uh, and we think we've run this thing to the ground. Also looking against our timeline, realizing we, we had to get sent at some point. So with that, I know there's been some discussion about working sessions. Uh, I realize you guys have a lot of stuff going on on your plate. Uh, we've invested a ton of time. Uh, on this thing. Weekly meetings, two, three hours every single week. Uh, we realize it's an uphill battle, it has to go on ballot, ballot and everything else, but just knowing that you know, we, we all invest a lot of time and energy, and so do you guys. You know, we've, we've had a lot of discussions, many of you attended our meetings and things. We just want to make sure that we give you know, a product that we want to put our name on before you know, it gets the ballot, and that you guys understand all of our comments and suggestions and whatnot. Um, so, I don't want to put you on the spot right now, uh, but if you guys do, I don't know what you guys' schedules look like, courts and annexations and everything else, but if you have time, we're available. Uh, but for my schedule, it's starting to get a little bit there mm -hmm. now with the softball season. So, no, that's what I was going to bring up actually, too. So, I'm glad you mentioned it. If you want to do some sort of just a work session sometime so we can all sit down and go to <coughs> my page real quick with your guys. <coughs> Yes, sir. Uh, whenever you guys are available, uh, we can float it around. So, Vinny, I know we have uh, Ms. Krabacher here as well. Uh, great much. Uh, but uh, I've been a year, and I still can't get it right. Uh, <laughs> what a surprise. But yeah, how, how do you want to do that? you want float dates to meet me? Um, I'll, I'll get with the commission. How do you do you got Well, evenings is probably better, I would assume. Yes. Yeah, that, that's well, I think I'll be Ron, Walk and Ryan. I mean, I think we could be amenable to a day if that's what you guys really needed, but evenings would probably be prosperous. Yeah, and evenings would be better, I think. For, yeah, for you guys as well. Or else. I mean, well, I'll tell you what, still working, right? do you want to get with, if you don't mind, get with them? Because I don't know your guys' schedules. Do you want to get with them and see what maybe, you know, kind of a week, sometime next week an evening would work? Send me a couple days that works for you, and then email them to us, and then we can. Roger that. Yeah, we need uh, seven days, legal notice. It would be a work session. I think we still have to do seven days. Huh? Yeah. Seven days, Ms. Burner? I think it's 48 right. hours. Mm -hmm. Is it how many days uh, for a working session notice do we need to give? Is it seven? Um, you can do a regular meeting is seven days, but that's because we just do the ad. I think you can go up to 24 or 48 yeah. hours. You have plenty of time to fill the Okay, so if I get with them this week, we can have something next week yeah. if possible. Okay. You guys get together with your group, shoot, shoot us a couple possible dates that will work for you and we'll figure it out. Sure, thanks. Let's get it done. Awesome. Thanks. Yes, sir, thank you. So anything else? Nothing else. All right. I'm sorry to be the rain on everyone's parade, but you cannot communicate. You have to set, give a couple days and do all that now in the open session. You can't, you can't, really shouldn't do that during, during email. It's a round robin. So if I go direct to the mayor, one-on-one, -on -one, he goes one-offs and contacts. Yeah, that's a round robin. Well, and then I do one-offs. You can't do that. No, what I was going to do was, is you send me a date, I'll pick one of them, I'll send the invitation out, and then if it, I can't do it that way, exactly. I can't do an invitation, it gets declined. No. I'm not talking to anybody, I'm saying if they simply decline it. To schedule a meeting, no discussion of the charter, no discussion of the city of Berkeley. You're telling me you're scheduling? Right. That is, that is, you're scheduling city business. We're not discussing. We're you're scheduling, scheduling city business, which is city business. <laughs> You have to be able to schedule the meeting. I've never heard of such a thing. Okay. It's public. It's public. It's all point. So if every single person emails you directly what their schedule is. And yeah, when I email them, them directly, let's up, I usually put information only, and they very rarely do they respond. I'm sorry, I So when I send them informational emails, I put informational only, and they don't respond. So you're, you, they're an elected body. You are an extension of that body. Everything has to be done in open session. Everything has to be done in open session. They have to do everything in open session. Before I even brought it up, I ran it by Jake just to make sure, but you have to do it in open session. Did you guys take me, uh, minutes and all that during your meeting as well? We take minutes every single week. So you guys have that covered now. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Well, our meetings are also incorporated in the charter with all of our suggestions and changes and everything else. I mean, it's well documented. So you can say like on this date, you guys discuss those topics. Gotcha. Yeah, but as far as that scheduling, I would just do it in open session. So, Mr. Mayor. Sir. 
uh, Don, I would, Mr. Hall, I'm sorry, uh, talk to your people, get a couple of dates, come back in two weeks, tell us, we'll decide then what day we're going to do the meeting on. Is, is council agreeable to that? Thank you, sir. No, I was talking to you. Yes, thank you. I, whatever you guys want to do, I mean, I just, I, I'm just trying to schedule it. Well, should we just come up with dates? That way he has it and we'll go back to his. That's that's how we do it. I always his get council. like three or four days from you guys and yeah. I go and I plug you it. Know, that way we're not going back and forth, back and forth. I mean. Okay. It just seems kind of hyperbole that we're talking about to do this to make a public meeting for the public. Mm -hmm. But the public's not going to know about the illegal advertising, so that's why they like to do it in open session. Okay. Yeah. Next mm -hmm. Thursday. Next Thursday. Nine o'clock. You say, John? I got one. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll do it. Right. We've we've been doing this for a long time. I'm sorry. I'm not sure. It's difficult. It seems like a lot of work to, to get a meeting. So maybe you want to consider that with suspending your work and stuff. All right, we'll just get back. Oh. How about July 6th? I'm free July 6th. How about September 9th? That's too late. Nah, it's football season. I ain't got no time. Right, just get, just come back. How about, how about uh, February of 24? All right, moving on. Day. All right, so committee, uh, so we're done with committee reports, down to resolutions done, ordinances, uh, four for intro, one with action. Ms. Perner. All right, ordinance 2022-21, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on June 21st, 2022. An ordinance amending ordinance 2021-36 that established a schedule of fines and costs and a bail bond schedule for the city's mayor court. Ordinance 2022-22, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on June 21st, 2022. An ordinance authorizing the expenditure of funds of over $20,000 for an expanded traffic study. Ordinance 2022-23, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on June 21st, 2022. An ordinance supplementing certain appropriations contained in New Carlisle City Ordinance 2021-44. Ordinance 2022-24E, introduction, public hearing and action tonight. An ordinance authorizing the expenditure of funds of over $20,000 for the repair of the wastewater department's 1998 International VAC Sewer Jet Combination Truck and declaring an emergency. Council. Moved. Second. Second, oh, wow. second by Mr. Roadwall. And an explanation of this, our back truck uh, for our wastewater department is down. We are backed up on some uh, sewers that we need unclogged. Um, so this is a emergency ordinance to get those repair done. The quote is for 28,263, but we usually run into extras when we get into this. So uh, in order to avoid a second round of legislation, we're asking for 35. Uh, this is in our budget that we can transfer some funds around to, to fix. Your discussion council? Yes. Okay, we got three, so we'll just go from Cook down. So, Mr. Okay. Cook. I guess I'm having a great problem putting $20,000 into a piece of equipment that's 25 years old. And I understand the fact that we probably need this piece of equipment. But would it be apropos to look around and see if one of these equipment people do not have a demonstrator that possibly could be money well spent on well if i remember right this one was i don't know if it was bought off gov, gov deals or not we bought it was, off from union ohio but yeah you're i don't know if he was on council or not when we did buy it mm -hmm. okay. i don't it think was, he was. A, new, a new one's gonna probably cost i mean i know you didn't say new but a new one's probably gonna be 200 grand or more more than that i asked howie so it's just not worth the benefit to go out and buy a new back truck because they are so expensive we did buy this from Union, I want to say, in 18 or yeah, 19. Um, so right now we have Clark County on hold. Should we have to do any emergency repairs? Um, but this is very, to get the engine rebuilt and put the money into it, it should last for a very, very, very long time. But it's more, it's more cost beneficial to this than go out and loan and buy a whole new system. Because you would have to loan it with the wastewater plant. Well, that and when you, I mean, it's going to take months to build. Yeah. Like you can go down to your local. Jeff Weiler, yeah, there's something a lot. Mm -hmm. Why not? Well, 
Because Wally has no cars. No. <laughs> Anything else, sir? No, I'm good. Mr. Bond. That was my only question was kind of along the same lines as far as is the truck still, you know, I don't know what the value of it was. Is it worth putting this much money into that truck? But it sounds like it's worth making that investment in that sure. truck. Um, I don't know what, uh, how often we use this truck or. Um, it's highly used in the department. You know, it, mm -hmm. I guess I would just have to take uh, your guys' recommendation on that as far as you know, being worth putting that much money into. Um, looking at the, the quote, it doesn't look out of line mm -hmm. for what they're quoting. So. Sure. Good, Mr. Bond. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Mr. Grimm. Well, that was also going to be my question. <laughs> Best uh, is it going to be worth putting $20,000 into a 1998 vehicle if we look at used ones? That's what I asked. First thing I asked Howie is what's the cost benefit here? You look for a used one, even that's going to be out of our price range. But I said if we put this money in here, it will last a little bit longer. You're rebuilding the engine. So it's, it's going to have some light left to it. Because the uh, body and the vacuum part in good shape? As far as I know, yes, sir. Okay. I'm Thank done. You. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Anyone Questions? else? Thank you. Mr. Lindsay. What? You said it costs too much. I know it's too much money to, re to buy a new one. That would probably take a year or so to get it. Has there been any checking into or looking at something maybe uh, 15 years newer than 25 years old and still buy a used one that we can get maybe at a reasonable, I don't know what a reasonable price, to, I don't know what a new one of these would cost, probably a couple hundred, maybe $250,000. So uh, if we could get one 15 years newer and it only costs, I don't know, a hundred grand. That would be way more than that. Would it be? Mm-hmm. And what facts? This one cost 110, didn't it? Used, yeah. Well, yeah, but it was 98 used. So if you got one 10, 15 years, I don't know. So you guys can do this. You can take Mr. Kitko's recommendation. That's the legislation in front of you. You can table it. We can worry about it next week, or you know what you guys want to do. But you know, Mr. Kitko is very versed when he does this stuff. So huh. my first question to him was, is it worth the money to rebuild? And he said yes, because of the prices to buy new. Um, so we will take his expertise in that, and that's why we have the legislation in front of you. But you guys can do multiple things with this particular piece, how you see fit. Um, but I do trust Mr. Kiko's analogy. I would like to know what a used one would cost that's something newer than, than 25 years old. Uh, I know this probably does need to be fixed. It, I do see it out regularly. Uh, I used to. And... Uh, but I think we need to be looking at replacing it. They, they won't even give you a quote. You know, there, there's so many other things on this truck that can go wrong. And if I remember correctly, when we bought that truck from Union, they had just rebuilt the pumps or something on it, or the vacuum. It was either a, 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 some suction pump or a vacuum that they had just rebuilt on it. So is there anything else you can go wrong with it besides this engine that needs to be I'm not sure. rebuilt? I'm not sure. I'm sure there are. It's a mechanical device. I'm sure there's lots of things that can go wrong, I would assume. Here's, here's the exact same one we have, same year, $39,700. What? Oh, same year? Same year. $39,000? $39,000. So you got anything newer than that one on there? Well, yeah, there's 2017 for 152,500. There you go. Or 2007. I'm sorry, 2007. That's okay. Randy can write that check. <laughs> the new ones, they don't. You don't. You have to request. He can't. You, have to, you have to submit an actual match. request for. Court. <clears throat> it's so. No, I love the fact that. Mr. Mayor, I just called for the vote. So you said Clark County is like covering us if, if we need there we, yeah. if we need. do they charge us for that <laughs> yes what does that cost i do not know that's okay. one thing i do not know okay well when you're ready miss burner yeah they're all all right mayor lowry yes vice mayor grim yes councilman bond this is to approve this correct 
we're mm -hmm. not tabling this or anything. Correct. Um, yes. Councilman Cook? No. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? I guess. Did she say yes? Yeah. And Councilman Roadwell? Yes. That passes six to one. Right, thank you Would you like much. me to read other business? Please. Additional city business, the council will have pizza and the public Saturday, June 18th at the Farmer's Market. This starts at 10 a.m. The city offices will be closed Monday, June 20th to observe Juneteenth. The council meeting will be on Tuesday, June 21st. Mm -hmm. City fireworks display will happen Saturday, June 25th. The rain out date of Sunday, June 26th. Community garage sale is Saturday, June 25th and Sunday, June 26th. This is citywide and open discussion for any other city-related matters. Council, any other city-related matters? Sure. Yes. Sir. I mentioned it a few months ago. I'm not gonna let it go until we can get a vote on it, up or down. We have a new contract with uh, Pike. What is it? Elizabeth Jones. Elizabeth, sorry, thank you. Uh, that I think that the department has the funds now with that contract that we can expend a little bit of that money to the firefighters across the board and move them to $13 an hour. I know they just got a dollar an hour raise from $10, which in my opinion is, is, uh, is not right. They put their lives on the line every time they go roll out on a call, whether it's EMS call, fire call, whatever it is, they put their lives on the line and we only want to pay them $11 an hour. I think it's atrocious that that's all we pay them and we have the money, we have the funds, we can, we can move them to $13 an hour across the board. And that's besides, and then whatever shirts they have, whatever that pay scale is, it would just be on top of that. So I would put that into a form of a motion. Do you need me to repeat any of that? No, I was jotting it all down. <laughs> <laughs> so, second. Second? Before we go with the vote, has council looked at the budget? Did any comp computations on this? Thank you. Take it, please. I was just going to ask before, well, now we got a second. I was going to ask anybody any questions, but my question was, you guys have made a motion to set and a motion to second. And I'm not arguing your, your point because I totally understand they're way underpaid. But where's the, the financial report to back up what you're telling us? That uh, contract, I have to get the exact number. I think it's 400 and some thousand dollars or three, 350 something. This year, this year, but that's in quarterly increments. We'll receive 350 mm -hmm. this year. Uh, next year, the next two years will be 390 each year. Okay. So you're also running the assumption that we're staffing. We're not. We're, you know, we can. We, we we have to staff them when we can. So that three is going to eat into when we have to staff them. Mm -hmm. And they're already complaining that we don't staff them enough. So I'm assuming I'm going to have a well, meeting with Mr. Dill. If 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 my if mm -hmm. my remembering of the contract is. We only staff them when we have extra manpower and he's after down. our station is staffed. Is that not correct, Chief? Yes, sir. So we this year we're getting uh, $350,000 plus. We are also getting the billing money, which is approximately another, I'm going to say conservatively, uh, thirty-five grand a year is probably more than that. That's year two and three, not the first year. We don't get the we don't get that on the first year. I don't think so. We negotiated the second uh, year. I year. thought we got it on every year. In my regulation of the contract. Mm -hmm. We paid back that one. Mm -hmm. That's the reason we're getting three fifty. But yeah, we're we're getting their medical billing billing as of now. Okay, I'll take a look at that in the contract. I don't remember that. I thought it was year so, two and three only. So with the, with the contract, just for this year and the billing medical, I'm going to say we'll, we'll probably, they're probably paying us somewhere in the neighborhood of 380 to 390 grand more than what we already had and a lot more than we ever got from them. And I see no reason with that kind of money coming into the department 
that we cannot give our firefighters and our medical personnel $13 an hour for every time they roll out and put their lives on the line. Every time they're on an accident. Look in the news. How many people, how many firefighters, first responders, has been killed because they got hit on a, on a scene because some driver was not paying attention and they thought, oh, it's just fire trucks, we'll just go around them. And then somebody walks out from a blind spot and they wind up dead when they was expecting to go home and have birthday whatever with their wife and their kids. And now they're going to a funeral. I think it's atrocious that we do not move this forward and give them $13 an hour, period. And that's really a low side. I honestly think it should be a lot more, but I'm smart enough to know that Mr. Bridge and probably the chief both would have heart attacks if I really threw the number out. I think they're worth because you cannot put a, a, a dollar amount on somebody risking their lives. And I don't know, the only other firefighter that's up here is Mr. Cook. Agreed, it was probably in the bucket brigade. No offense, sir. <laughs> but, you know, uh, I'm a more current retired firefighter than Mr. Cook. Not as current as the chief in the current department. But I put my life on the line multiple times and wound up in the hospital in comas because of my firefighting duties. I have fallen through roofs that are supposed to have been safe because the fire more involved than it was supposed to be. Fortunately, I never got hurt, as, except for the smoke inhalation when the air mask failed. And I didn't realize it until I passed out. And uh, I just think it's, it's it, you know, uh, we need to do it, just plain and simple. We need to give them $13 an hour. And yes, I think we can afford it with the $390,000 coming in this year alone. Go ahead. Mr. Vaughn. I, I agree that we need to pay our, our fire and EMS as much as we possibly can. Um, but I would like to see some hard figures and broken down as far as what the amount of money we have. I agree with the bill. Um, but I would like to see the figure, you know, and, and how much we do, how many hours do we pay out a year? What is $13 an hour going to look like total payout? Maybe when we look at those figures and we see what's coming in, 15 is really where we're going to wind up and well, have that money. I don't know without looking at hard, with right. good figures is all I'm saying. I, I would just feel more comfortable making a more educated um, decision if we had some, some black and white figures to look at. When I brought this up uh, on, Mr. a couple Lindsay. of months ago. Hang on just a second. Did you finish? Yeah. yeah. Mr. Green. You, you, well, go, ahead. You, go ahead with Dan. Dan first. Go ahead, Mr. Rogel. He said we just get the, the opinion of the man who runs the department. <clears throat> I mean, we all go to experts when we have questions. No one comes to me to talk about fire. And if you want to come to me and talk about how to sell cigarettes, I'll tell you how to sell cigarettes. So when, when, when I have a question about fire EMS, you can ask Chief. I have no problem reaching out to him, and he gives me the, the, the straight line answer, no BS, here's how it is. So, I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying that people don't deserve pay raises. They all do. But we also have a budget and a structure we have to work within, just like our houses and, and our businesses. And, you know, why we are making money off Elizabeth Township, we also have equipment upgrades that the fire department needs. And, 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 and thing, yes, Mike and Mr. Lowry, Mayor, um, those, those, that equipment is, is expensive and getting more expensive. Um, and, no, and no offense to you, Mr. Lindsay, um, I don't know where you were a firefighter, I'm guessing in a large city. Vandalia. Vandalia. Um, and no offense to New Carlisle, but I mean, it's, it's apples to oranges. I mean, um, yes, fire, I mean, fire is dangerous no matter where you go, and EMS calls are dangerous no matter where you go. Um, but, I mean, I can tell you, I've been in that fire department on many Saturdays for baseball sign-ups, and, 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 and it's, it's at times not very busy. Um, so I, I, I will yield my opinion to whatever Chief Trustee tells me is best for his department and what's best for what he thinks the city of New Carolina, because he is the expert in this matter, not me. 
No I would problem. lightly interject because at the end of the day, we need to look at the budget. I just asked Fire Chief to go sit with Colleen tomorrow and take a look at that. We have no problem paying more. We just, I don't want to do it blindly. Right. I know we talked about it before, and I did the computation right here at the desk. In, and it, and it was it, only like 20 grand. You know, so it like, may not I would just budget. rather have data to support it. That's it. You know, there's, <laughs> we very well could. But Colleen could be, they could, I asked them to go to the thing and they can go, and Colleen can look at percentage, how much we collected the year and date, and she can make her assumption based off that you know as we get closer to the year end we have a better idea of what how the expenses came in i mean there are first responders you definitely want to pay them well um but i think okay my mr bridger saying and also to you guys saying we just signed this contract with elizabeth township in march and yeah i know we've got april may and june or may um but getting those figures and being able to actually look at things to say okay this is where we're at. This is where we could be. But also, too, you never bank on money you don't have. that you don't have or that you may not have in three years. That's just like a lot of fire departments hired a lot of people on safer grants. A safer grant is where you get a lot of money to hire people with the presses that you're going to have that money coming from somewhere else to keep those people in five years. And there's a lot of firefighters who went in the street because of that, because they didn't, departments couldn't do it. With our E-Town contract, it's a three-year contract. So do I feel that firefighters should be paid more than what they are? Yes. And that was one of the things we were, we were going to look at. We've had a lot of things on our plate these past couple months with a lot of things going on. Uh, do I feel, but what Mr. Lindsay is talking about is our fire, what we call a fire only. They don't have an EMS certification. They're, they live in the city. They run pay for call. They don't pull per se shifts in the station unless it's a special event or something like that. They're what we call our fire only. Should they be paid more than what they are? Definitely. Should our EMTs and medics be making more than what they are? Definitely. But we need to look at what we actually can do. We're also looking at the fact that if we don't get a grant for a new engine, especially with developments coming into the city, we need a new engine. Right now, the price tag on a bare bones, cut and dry engine is $650,000. And that's without, a state of the, that's without any equipment on it. A new medic right now is $260,000 without a cot and without a load system in it. So those are the things that we're we're looking at the salaries, yes. Is our salary comparable with the, with the departments in the area right now? Yeah, we're comparable. Are we as much as what the, as say Bethel Park is? No. But Bethel Park's a lot richer Dagon Township than what the city of New Carolina is. It really boils down to what money coming in, what money's coming out. Do I feel we should try to go ahead and raise the, the fire onlys up to say $12 an hour? We're making 11 right now, up to $12 an hour or $13 an hour? Yeah. But also, too, you have to look at it. If I'm paying that fire only guy that's, he's got a fire ticket, that's it. He's got one cert under his belt. If I'm paying him a dollar less an hour than I'm paying an EMT that spent eight months in school to get that EMT ticket and is liable for somebody's life in the back of a medic, that's, that's not good business. Mr. Mayor. And, yeah. Sir. I think you'd hardly be hard pressed finding anyone to say that we pay our fire and EMT enough. But we do need to look at if they have the money to do it. Mm -hmm. So I would move we table that motion until we have a chance to look at it. So we can have that. I can try, try to have those figures by the next council meeting. Thank you. you think you can, I'll get with you and Colleen. I would like to have a by the end of the week. Right, but we can email them to the you council. guys. You guys I'll second that motion. do a very good job at taking care of your employees, and I know you will do the same thing, but you, you should look at the data first. And I know it can do it, but let's just look at the data first. But I just want everyone to know, they do a very good job at taking care of the people who work here. So I have a, no doubt in my mind that they will do the right thing moving forward. We just got to get some data to it. Well, I like, you know, what Ben says. They may come back with numbers and say, it can be not 13, 15, yeah. which would be amazing. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mayor. 
Sir. The, we have levies for the fire department, for EMS, equipment. We have equipment levies. And if I'm not mistaken, aren't we banking money for a new engine? We and it's, money. and yeah. it started about three or four years ago, maybe yeah, four years ago, I think, that we was banking money in the prospect to buy a new engine. And at that time, it was, it was like 500 grand, I think. I understand they go up, they go up every year because fire service is the most lucrative uh, industry just about in the country, except for military. Uh, they, they take, and it costs more, labor and everything costs more. But like the chief said, when you buy an engine, then you gotta put another, I'm gonna guesstimate 20 to $30,000 to, is it more than that now? Okay, well, you know, it's been a while since I've been there, so. Okay, $50,000, you know, you gotta put ladders, you gotta put all the equipment, your axes, your, your fire hoses, your, your whatever it is, your nozzles, and some of them nozzles are three, four, five thousand dollars just for a nozzle. Uh, but like I said, we have levies to, to help take care of all that. This contract from E-Town, Elizabethtown, is the largest contract for our city in the history of doing Elizabeth Township. They're not gonna go anywhere else. Nobody else wants them. The only reason we got the contract, in my opinion, this time, is because nobody else would service them. And we, we kind of said, take it or leave, in my opinion. I think that's what happened. I could be wrong, but I think that's what happened, you know? Uh, so I'm not gonna let go, though. I'll just let that council know that. I'll let the administration know that. I'm not gonna let go of this until we do something. And, and it's not just for firefighters. I said, $13 an hour base across the board. That means your EMTs, your paramedics, they're gonna get that, that raise also. And it's only, they only get paid that amount when they roll out. They don't get paid that amount from sitting on their backside. No, well, that's not true, is it? They, no, get a re, they get a reduced rate, do they not, sitting no, in the house? No, sir. Firefighters that are, that are fire only get paid when they go on a call. Right. Part-time firefighter EMT paramedics are paid the entire time they're on shift. Okay. Hourly salary. And they're, and they're normally they're at the station then? Yes, sir. Okay. So so I stand corrected on that. I I thought they only got paid. Fire only do. Right. Okay. So my apologies on the mis, misspeak. The, uh, but I'm still not going to let go of it until we do something for these firefighters. So uh, I would, Mr. Mayor, my opinion is called for the vote. On, oh, did it died for lack of second, I guess, huh? Okay. No, I think no there was a second, again. and then he, okay. seconded. Yeah, yeah, he seconded. motioned to table it until. I seconded it. Ben set suggested to table yeah. it until we right. get the numbers. Right. And well, Dale, Grim, uh, Grim Dale motioned to table it, and Dale. you seconded that, right. correct? And I, and I would have thought, no, no digs on the, on, on the administration. But I would have thought when I brought this up last time and we were scrambling, Mr. Bridge was scrambling to get numbers, I would have thought the numbers had already been plugged in because the program they have, they can punch each number in there. The total amount divided by 12, that's roughly what you're gonna get a month. And, you know, see what, see what comes out. They do it every year with a budget. Why couldn't they do that with this? Because that's we, just my comment. It was my recollection we were talking about it last time. Council didn't want to move forward because when we looked at the budget, we were going to initiate it at the beginning of next year. So that's why we didn't move forward with it because well, we were going to look at it during budget position. development and yeah, bring that in for the 2023 payroll. Yeah, they just... Or something like that. I don't remember it coming in next year, but I just have something to like that. yield just, to you. Just to clarify, did, Chief, they all got a raise in January, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. I got the, the last time we brought it here, where the kids Can I call the vote to table it? it? This year's vote? Yeah, that's what we were calling the raise this year. Frank, a new raise for next year. Yes, please, call the vote to table it. <laughs> Okay, so I'm calling the vote to table this motion currently. Uh, my second was... Mr. Graham, Mr. Vice Mayor Vaughn. Vaughn. Okay. wrote it in the wrong one. All right, Vaughan. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. 
Councilman Lindsay? No. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. All right, that, that passes six to one. All right, thank you very much. All right, any other city business? Certainly. I would like to request a motion to have an executive session to discuss the employment of a public employee. I move we go into executive session of the discussion. Second. Second. Second by Mr. Roadwell. Okay, Eggleston was my first. Second was Roadwell. We're voting to go into executive session. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Councilman Grimm. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Councilman Vaughn. Yes. Councilman Cook. I'm not offended. Councilman Cook. Me either. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. No. Councilman Roadwald. Yes. That passes six to one. All right. We'll go to executive session. We'll take a quick five minute break. Yeah. For Lady. And there will be no other business afterwards. I move that we uh, adjourn the executive session and return to regular session. Second. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Grim? yes. Councilman Vaughn? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Mr. Mayor, I move to adjourn. Second. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Roadwell? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Motion to adjourn accepted 7 0.